Good morning, everybody. Just want to talk about biochar. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of biochar. I'll just make it simple for you. It's really good for the soil. It's carbon, all right? So when you burn something, if you don't let it burn all the way down, you end up with carbon, charcoal. And charcoal is very beneficial to the earth. Let's keep it as simple as that. It's a good place for microbes to, to live in, um, just different foods for plants. It's like a big giant sponge. So I'm just going to, if you want to find out more about biochar or the pyrolysis process, um, Google it because there's a lot of good information out there. I'm not an expert in it. I've just done it for a long time, and I just wanted to share it. So here's the beginning process. you got to dig a hole. You know, the biggest idea is to keep the oxygen out of the fire to where you put another layer on it of wood that needs to be burned, and it basically smothers the bottom layer and causes it to gas, to get rid of its uh, methanes and its oxygens and its uh, the vinegars and the water and the steam uh, gets forced out of the out of the um, the wood and it becomes char, biochar, uh, carbon, charcoal. <laughs> There's all kinds of different words that people use out there, but in simplicity, you're basically smothering it, forcing the gases out, and burning the gases. And, and letting the steam loose. So you're doing two things. You're keeping, actually quite a few things. You're, you're keeping the um, carbon and you're burning the methanes and all the gases that are in the wood and you're, you just keep the carbon in a nutshell. So that's where we're at now. So the first step is just to dig a hole. This one's uh, probably between two and three feet deep. Maybe four to five feet long and about three or four feet wide somewhere along in there it's a good sized pit i burned a uh, brush um last night for probably maybe about two or three hours and i just have a lot of it around here i mean a lot of it's got to go and i don't want to waste it i want to use it for the garden i want to put the nutrients back in the garden instead of releasing it into the atmosphere so that's where we're at. We're going to start with a pit, and then I'll show you the next step here in a little bit. All right, so I don't know if you remember, but I had this giant pile over here, and I've kind of just been sorting through it, uh, kind of creating, you know, some small twiggy stuff, and then even smaller than that, which is over there, which I already picked up, and I'll show you what I'm doing with that here in a second. So I've just been kind of sorting through this stuff, um, in the process of making some biochar with the 55-gallon uh, drums over there, and I'll show you that in a second. So just kind of sorting everything out, putting it in piles, and then getting ready to burn. Right now we're in a burn van, so the only way that I can burn is in a 55-gallon uh, uh, drum with no holes in it with a screen. And like I said, I'll, we'll go over that here in, here in a minute. But I want to show you, I've got this filled up. This is the pit that I showed you in the other video. And it's filled up with all that smaller stuff. These little piles here. Anything that, you know, can burn pretty quick and get the fire going nice and toasty. And then next after that would be the bigger stuff. And then once it's going really good, then we can start moving into the bigger stuff. And of course, I've got a bunch of smaller branches and all those that get dragged in. Um... To, to fill that pit up basically to fill this pit up completely and this evening put it out and we'll go over all that again now let me go on over here to this 55 gallon drum and kind of explain that to you a little bit so in this process of me sorting out you know all the bigger stuff and littler stuff um, I have this 55 gallon drum see if I can get up here close enough so what you do the drum has no holes in it all right, so you're starving it from oxygen and allow it to, to burn off, you know, all the oxygens and gases and stuff out of that, out of the wood. And then you want it to stop just before it starts to burn the carbon, which is charcoal. So if you look down in there, if I can keep this camera from melting, you can see it's starting to turn white. So now that it's turned white, I'm going to stir it up just a little bit and put another layer of smaller stuff on it. 
Uh, of course, I can't show you me doing that with a camera in my hands. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the camera down for a minute, throw it in there, and then show you what happens. All right, so here I am back. I dumped that container there with uh, all the smaller stuff in it. And you can kind of see it's now smoking. It's white. So that means it's, it's burning off, you know, all the, the vinegars and moisture and and then burning a little bit of gas, but it's not burning clear. If it's burning clear and you see a lot of heat coming from it, that kind of means that you're starting to burn your charcoal. So you don't want it that far. Now with our regulations around here, we got to have a screen that's at least quarter inch. So I've got this giant mesh here that just uh, kind of kind of keeps anything from coming out of it. If I had a little smaller screen, like up at the top of my chimney right there, I'd probably put that on just for safety because it, it, it flows pretty good. Now this little device here does work pretty good. It's just a, just a drum, a little bit of space in between, so it lets oxygen in, and then all the smoke and everything goes up and just kind of keeps it safer. But that works pretty good, but I'm not wanting to burn two today, so I'm just burning the one and sorting the wood. So that's where we're at. Um, later on this evening after four o'clock, I'm going to burn this pile and we'll uh, come back and show you that.